Right, this is going to be a video about a subject I haven't spoken of in quite some time. This was the thing that I pretty much started this channel out doing. Their Fated Travels, which was the basis from uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition sessions. It was a combination of uh, original stuff and storyline stuff and uh, module stuff and all of this was just amalgamated into a big thing and put out as uh, stories on fanfiction.net, uh, various Warhammer forums, and then recorded by yours truly, written up uh, by me, into a, into a, you know, in my own words, in my own way, and a lot of additional creative stuff added as well to really make it all flow and make sense. Because I wasn't the GM, so I really had to come along and interpret a lot of it where I could. A couple of guest writers writing on a few of the chapters, some of the group members and things like that. You can still catch that uh, playlist. I've still got it around. It's like about 90-odd videos long, getting over 100. That's pretty crazy. The whole thing came in at about 18 hours or so as a playlist, so you can listen to the entirety of their Fate of Travels. 165,000 words or thereabouts. So it's more than a standard book and a half of Black Library, which is about 100,000 words. Well, I had a uh, comment on uh, one of the old uh, videos of their Fate of Travels, where someone said, oh, you know, uh, this it's really, really good series, actually, and you know, I'm going to tell all my uh, group about it, and we'll all be following it. But I was almost put off by the music, because the music was really, really uh, not good at all. But I kept listening, but and then uh, and I got to the story, and then I realised it was good, but the music almost put me off. And I thought about that, and I realised, well, yeah, it was sort of as a response to that. Um, at the time, when I was uh, looking for music to use for their Faded Travels, I wanted to make sure that I was going to avoid any copyright issues from uh, songs and things. I didn't want like um, people posting uh, claims and that sort of thing and then having to have adverts being claimed by some other company on my videos. I wanted to make sure that all the music I used was royalty free, Creative Commons license stuff. So I had a good old look around the net. And now the problem is with a lot of... I don't know if you've looked for music before that you, you can use um, legally on, on your YouTube videos. But a lot of the, you know, royalty-free music, if you put that in for a search, it still ends up sort of them wanting money for it, essentially. And I know there's nothing wrong with them wanting to be paid for, you know, creating music and that sort of thing. But if you are just some guy who's just putting out a, a radio play-style amateur thing on YouTube and you're only doing it out of love for the hobby, you're not going to make any money. You know, the, the videos aren't really, don't have adverts on or anything. Or, or or even if you had adverts on them, you know, not, not enough views to actually make anything. In this case, no adverts with their fate of travels. You know, uh, why should you really pay for it? You're not getting paid at anything. You're not making anything off it. Why should you have to pay? So I struggled to try and find any um, actual music that you could use uh, that you know, it wouldn't actually cost. They they have the track and you can sample it sort of thing and then it has voices going over the track saying this is a sample and this sort of thing to ruin you being able to use it. So you actually have to pay for it. And it was like, well, no, I refuse. You know, I'd rather just not have music at all. It's just a little something extra there to give it something, you know, up there with like an audio book should. You know, after so much searching, it was really, really hard. I had a breakthrough. I found Bjorn Lin's website and uh, I'll chuck a, a link in the bar below, actually, so you can you, know, you can find his work. So I raided that and used a lot of his stuff. And it, to me, it wasn't ideal because it took a lot of the elements of the music that that could have been very um, that could have had a strong degree of uh, realistic musicality to it. You know the real instruments, but but you know took took it and made it very synthy because he's very much synth based and all of his instruments are synth based. You know, so he's playing it all on a keyboard. All of the instruments, not my really my ideal sound, but I got a a, a thing going. I I built up a a shtick. You know, and, you know the uh, the intro and the music and the way it all all got and the, the way I. I, I made it work personally for myself, so I figured, oh, all right, it'll be all right for everyone else, you know, we'll go with it, you know, it's it's the free music I can uh, have, so that, I mean, that's why I, I used it, it was, it was ideal because I didn't have to pay, so it was that or no music, really, <laughs> that was, obviously in later time then I found uh, Kevin McLeod at incomptech.com, 
uh, link to him below as well and then you know I just used a whole load of his material on a lot of my other videos like um, the Dark Heresy series and Dragon Age and sort of like outros to the gaming talk thing and the intros to the gaming talk thing and the stings and stuff that goes in there some really beautiful sounds from him and you know he uses the real instruments real proper stuff so that's actually the sound I was looking for but Oddly, you know, through him, I can't really find too much like old and fantasy style basic music. And I was going to run something in an RPG um, that I'm prepping for that's going to be like an old fantasy world festival fake type thing. And I've been using, you know, uh, Kevin McLeod's website for all my music. And I, I went through his to try and find sort of like old fair music and that sort of thing. Because I Googled it and I could try to find that. And couldn't find any music anywhere like that. At least not free. You know, I only want to use it as a GM and play it in, for once in a session to my players. You know, that's all I want to use the music for. You know, I'm not paying for that. I couldn't actually find anything um, for once on Kevin's side. Not really anything spot-on suitable, you see. And then I went back to Bjorn Lin's site, because I actually remembered that he had a few tunes on there a bit like that. And so I've actually gone in and raided it again, and uh, extracted a few things out specifically for this now. So... Again, while it wouldn't be completely ideal because it's going to have those little synthy elements, there's a few of them that are, are still pretty close to the mark, and you know I'll have them just playing in the background and on quite low, and they'll they'll be something at least to sort of build the feel of ye olden days market and craft stalls and entertainers and and fair exhibits and things. In regards to the their fated travels story and all that, uh, just while I'm here with you. It's always possible that that should be coming back because the way it ends, and I don't want to say too much about the ending in case you haven't got there yet. If you haven't, come on, hurry up. Um, it's left out very, very open for me to be able to show you more. And it's done that on purpose. It's very much a question mark. And uh, the intention was always at some point to come back and try and do another one. I mean, it was actually uh, conceived as like a, a, a three-parter. So you've had one part, therefore it travels completely. Now the next part conceived, the idea was always going to be their travels continued. I'd have to look into you know, what to do music-wise, you know, if I can really be bothered, because there wasn't quite enough views in that, or really anything I do to really warrant the amount of time and, and effort I actually put into making a video. I'm only talking like fundamentally the same things that affect all of you. You know, you've got commitments, you've got you've got the things you have to do. And when I make a video, I take a lot of time away from the people in my life and all of the other things I'm supposed to be learning and studying and doing, just to get that video really, really good. You know, as best as I can, and just you know, edit it and come up with sequences and intros and things for that, and that's even screwed me on here, as you might have seen in the copyright silliness videos. It's really good to see that these videos are changing people and affecting people, and it's making, you know, people say, oh, yeah, you know, you've you've actually started me playing this game, and you know, you're responsible for that. Yeah, but I'm just in the same situation as all of you. I don't have a lot of time on my hands, and people look at the work I do and the things, and some of the videos I put out, and they say, wow, Rob, you got too much time on your hands and I just I just look at them and shake my head and say wow are you kidding you know I've, I've got so many commitments and I've got so much I'm trying to read and do and study and learn and that I'm involved in you know organizations and things that I'm I'm active in I don't have any time to, you know basically to, to keep the output going like this constantly and it has been constantly you know week after week, month after month, without any breaks really, you know, I have to stop things, push them aside, neglect them. I've managed to get uh, monetization opened up on my account, which is nice, and I know that some of the other YouTubers have managed that too. But uh, I don't make any money. I haven't made any money yet. Nowhere near enough uh, clicks in, in the way it works to be able to make one, one P because... You have to accumulate like 60 Great British Pounds before they even will do a first payout. And so at the rate that clicks happen on my videos in my account, that's probably never going to happen. I'll probably never get even one payout ever. So, uh, yeah. I was thinking about it, you know. I've used a lot of music, seeing as we're talking about music anyway. I've used a lot of music in my videos before. 
So it occurred to me, what I could do is put out a Robert J. Fremantle soundtrack playlist. Because you'll notice I've got everything playlisted up. You know, I break everything down into uh, sub-playlists. I'm crazy like that. And a lot of the stuff that I'm favouriting now and watching, I actually make my own private playlist for a lot of that as well, so I'm like super organised. Uh, but yeah, the soundtrack, um, you know, a lot of the series I've done, you just hear like a little piece of the song. So maybe if I just put a video out with the whole song on it uploaded and sort of, you know, have the link to it and where you can find that uh, royalty-free Creative Commons song. Uh, uh, to me, you know, it would be relevant because it's music I've used, so it would be my personal soundtrack to my channel, including that the FA Travel song that that user out there doesn't like. It would have to be in it, of course. But you could just skip that video if you don't like that one. So I'm, I'm considering maybe putting those out soon, the soundtrack series. The end song, too, that I've been using for some of my gaming talk and the Dragon Age, you know, the way that, that piece... That piece of music there is really good. Uh, I can I just kick back and listen to that sometimes. Such is the genius of Kevin McLeod, to be honest. You know, anything that gets that man more exposure is great. So there's a few of them that are real gems. And it would be nice to be able to let you hear how the whole track goes rather than just the little bit I use. Of course, there's always possibilities that I'll use other bits of those tracks in, in other situations. I am very creative. I, I do most things. I do nearly every creative form conceivable except dance and uh, art I can't draw everything else you know music and singing and songwriting and poetry just all the other mediums I pretty much do all of it uh, so just this is just another vent really for all the mad shit that's going around my head so that it can escape somewhere you know like a pressure cooker and just let a bit of steam out into uh, into my projects well, there we go. Bit of stream of consciousness stuff for you there. Stuff that's on my mind, just floating about, saying it as I think it. What might be coming up on the horizon? I'll catch you at the next video, guys. And you know how the line goes. I'll see you at the table.